Hey guys, it's Pierre in our ice cream bar. So before we get started, I just wanted to say if you guys like this kind of video, if you like seeing tutorials, that kind of thing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I am looking into doing some giveaway type stuff for my patrons. I have a uh, really good starter body that's good for people getting into mods or doll dyeing, people just getting into the hobby. And then I also have Citrus's old head, which is still in really good condition, even though it is quite getting along in, in years now at this point. Anyway, today we're talking about dyeing alpaca fiber. It's a question I get every now and then, so I thought, hey, let's go ahead and cover it. This is just gonna be the basics, but it is gonna be kind of a long video, so bear with me here. Uh, the first method I ever used to dye alpaca hair was actually human hair dye. And I have an example. So Lemon's original wig, this is all human hair dye. And I would say overall that human hair dye was a process that I was already kind of used to getting the hair dye and getting like a paintbrush to paint the dye onto the fiber it was really easy um, I will say that this took a long time to make and even now I have this is the color pink that I was dyeing this fiber with and it took about three or four dye jobs to get this shade of pink from, from this. So it's not something that's going to be super fast and it's not something that really takes up the color really well necessarily all the time. Definitely test your fiber before you go ahead and dye a whole lot of fiber. I used Manic Panic dye at one point, which I had never used before. And of course, I dyed a whole wig with it and it ended up transferring to my doll. That was incredibly frustrating. So definitely always check, whatever method you use, always check like with one lock. So human hair dye is really self-explanatory. Every piece of every kind of hair dye I've ever gotten has come with some kind of instructions. Um, you can follow them as closely or as loosely as you want, really. The main idea is to put the dye on the fiber, let it sit for a while, and then wash it out until the water runs clear. That's pretty much the basics of every kind of human hair dye experience you will have. If you want to go ahead and shampoo the hair beforehand, that might help the dye take a little bit better, especially if you use like a cheaper shampoo, strip some of the oil out of it, but that's kind of up to your discretion how much you want to do in the processing kind of stage. So the next method I used was a uh, just fabric dye method just you like your basic writ dye that you can get at the craft store um, powder form and that is actually my least favorite method I think it would work really well for some people or depending on what you're looking for so I made it actually for this wig right here that is writ dye. Now this picture is edited to be much more saturated than this is in real life, and I have other pictures of that wig where you can see it's not that saturated. Um, the color is like this. This is just a leftover piece of fiber I had. So this is a color that I would call flossy. It's a little bit desaturated, like there's a lot of gray in here. Uh, the color is very muted. It's pretty light. It's possible that you can build on this. This is, I think, after one or two dye baths, so maybe I could uh, build on this a little bit. But the nice thing about the Rit dye is that it gives you pretty even color. You can see it's a pretty even coat. This is actually a couple colors mixed together, so maybe not the best example in the world, but um, hopefully you kind of see what I mean. I would say overall that the fabric dye is, it's definitely easy and it will definitely give you like a nice solid color, but it doesn't really give you that much control over what color that is, because in my opinion, every shade I dyed in that wig ended up being really desaturated, flossy, gray, pastel -y, and I really kind of wanted it to actually look more like that. Before we get into the last method of dyeing, which is acid dye, I definitely want to go over like your two golden rules for dyeing fiber. Absolutely always test your fiber before you dye a whole lot because you will be so sad if you go through the process of like cleaning the fiber and then you dye the whole thing and it's gonna transfer or it's gonna be the wrong color or just look terrible. Test it first. Always test it first. 
And then never leave alpaca hair in high heat for too long because alpaca hair, if you've ever worked with it before ever, you know it's very fragile and it will break. It'll break just by you looking at it. It'll just like burst. It is very fragile. And if it gets too hot, you can actually kind of damage it. It'll get really matted. It'll kind of lose some of that natural shine. So you really don't want your alpaca hair to be sitting in high heat for too long. It becomes really important when you get to acid dyeing because it's just, you know, it's a pot of like simmer water and it's used traditionally for people who are dyeing fiber for like making yarn and things like that where it's not as important that you keep that structural integrity throughout yeah ideally uh, you want it to turn out to look exactly like the alpaca fiber lock as it did before rather than having it look more like fur or like uh, yarn not that those are bad methods just that if you were going for that look it would be a lot easier to use those materials rather than go through the process of making it with alpaca fiber. So acid dye is my favorite method. I feel like it's like the tried and true method to get really bright colors, really intense colors. And once you kind of understand how to do it, it actually goes pretty fast, I, eh, relatively fast. It is a slow process, but you're doing so much more during that time. I'm just gonna bring up Citrus because he was just like right, right here, ready to go. So you can see the best thing about acid dye for me is the amount of color control that you get. You can see in his wig, he's got some real primary, really bright blues in there, but then he also has the greens in here. And these are all colors that had to be in the dye bath for different amounts of time at different temperatures. And in some cases, even different levels of acid in the dye bath. And you can see like the ones that were left in a little bit longer, they're a little more saturated, a little darker than these ones at the top which are a lot more, I don't know, kind of um, just lighter, just more pastel, but really, really intense color still. Of course, there are always cons. <laughs> Mainly, um, acid dye is a little bit more expensive than the other methods, depending on, I guess, what products you use. You're also gonna need more materials, um, and then you're going to, of course, need the, the dye itself. It usually comes in little small packets in powder form, smaller than this, so they're pretty tiny. I've only ever dyed fiber with acid dye in small bags. So very small amounts of fiber at a time. So I don't use that much dye that quickly, but it does kind of get up there in price after a while. There's also a learning curve because you have to pay attention to so many factors. You have to pay attention to how much fiber is in the dye bath, how long the dye bath has been going, how high the water level is, how hot it is, uh, how much acid is in the dye bath. They already say how much dye is in the dye bath, uh, the amount of time you leave it in for. So there's just a lot of factors going into it that you have to pay pay attention to all at the same time. So it's definitely not a method that I would recommend for someone who's just getting into the dyeing process or is very new to alpaca fiber. Uh, there is also, um, the rule of thumb I often hear is that you should treat acid dye kind of like how you would treat um, just like your common sense rules for like a heavy duty household cleaner. When I use acid dye, I use a respirator and I use goggles. You know, do your own research and if you decide to do acid dye bath kind of things, uh, just, you know, do what feels comfortable for you. That all being said, the process that I use is a little bit different from what you're gonna get on the bottle because the bottle is always talking about dyeing uh, big garments of clothing, which is obviously a lot larger than some alpaca fiber. <laughs> it can be difficult to get even coverage with acid dye if you don't really make sure all of the hair is spread out. Especially the way that I like to dye my fiber is with a fairly hot dye bath with a lot of dye, a lot of acid, make sure it really gets that color really fast. So it's a really quick dip. That's always my goal. It's like a flash dye. The nice thing about acid dye is that once it's out of the dye bath and you've rinsed it off with cold water, it's pretty much there to stay. And as with any object that has any kind of dye in it, there's always a chance that your doll can get some kind of transfer or stain from it, just like, you know, a dark colored wig cap or dark colored clothing. It's really a lot easier than trying to rinse out like a human hair dye or even a fabric dye 
once the color's in there, it's really in there and it's not going to go anywhere. So that's awesome. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful to some of you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. If a lot of you have a lot of specific questions, I can definitely try and do a more in-depth video about any of these methods. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to all of you soon. <laughs> Bye.